Hello and welcome to this short e-learning program, Seven and a Half Minutes to Better Email, brought to you by the Cranky Middle Manager Podcast. I am your humble servant, Wayne Tremell, and in the next, oh, seven and a half minutes, we're going to tackle something that makes pretty much everyone in the modern workplace cranky. The insane amount of email we all deal with every day and give you a couple of tips to make your world and those of the people you work with easier. What's the problem with email? Well, there's usually too darn much of it. A lot of times people don't understand what you want, or at least pretend not to understand, so nothing happens, which ironically results in more email. Here are the learning objectives for our time together. You'll learn a couple of techniques for helping get your email to the front of the line and a simple format for making sure no one can claim they didn't know what it is you asked for. Here's what you need to know about your audience. They're just like you. And I know that's no comfort because what do you do with your email? You skim it, you make quick judgments, and occasionally send responses without thinking about it too hard. That doesn't even begin to address the reply all button, which is another nightmare for another day. Here's the point. You're not going to fix your audience. They're going to do what they're going to do, so work with what you have. We're going to take a look at getting results with the way you and your audience really work. Most people's email screens are cluttered and insane. How do they decide what to read and act on? Same as you. They look at the subject line and whatever fits in their preview pane. If it looks important, or their boss was CC'd on it, they'll act. Otherwise, it goes to the bottom of the pile. How do you get your email to the front of this line? Well, it helps if you know how people decide what's important to them. To catch their eye, the subject must be relevant to what's going on in their world. And critical information should be in the preview pane so it catches their attention and slows them down enough to make a good decision about what to do with it. Think about it. How do you prioritize? If you're like most of us, you make that decision in less than five seconds, and it's based on three key things. The subject line, the little bit of information that appears in the preview pane, and key words that jump out at you. We're going to look at a format that maximizes each of these three components. Let's look at a format to create effective emails. And this one is familiar to most of us, even if we've never thought about it before. It's called the inverted pyramid, and it's how newspapers work. When we're scanning the newspaper, we look first at the headline. Is this something I care enough to read? Then in the lead, you get the most important information and make the decision whether you need to know more or not. Let's take a look at each of these components. The subject line, the headline for your email, should be short, relevant, and stop them in their tracks. Does it tell them that this is important? You want to create a sense of urgency in your reader. Which of these subject lines does that? Regarding your request or approval? I'm guessing approval will get your heart pounding a bit faster. Thanks for your email doesn't sound like there's much going on that's important other than someone being incredibly polite. Can't meet your deadline, how's Thursday? No question, you need to get on their calendar in a hurry and hope to heaven that Thursday works out. Think about it. The headline matters. If you get an email that says, monthly HR update, what are the odds you or your readers will set records deleting it? Do you care about it? Should you make time to read it? On the other hand, if it says, new payroll paperwork, read carefully, you can bet you'll have an intent audience. The lead, the first paragraph, contains the five W's, who, what, when, where, why, and does it in that one paragraph that fits in the preview pane. What do you want, and when do you want it? Here's a typical ineffective response. You sent someone some information. They're being very polite, but a little vague about what they want. The subject is your report. Well, what about it? The requested action, send me your thoughts on the changes I made. OK, how do you want it and when do you need it? We don't really know. Try this one on for size. The subject line edits to your report. Uh-oh, somebody's made changes to my work. In my preview pane, I know that they've made changes. They want my response in writing by Monday. And they're still polite and friendly, but I can decide whether to handle this now or put it on my to-do list. Here's a pretty good email lead. They've made a decision to go to Casual Fridays beginning this week. I know I need to read the list of acceptable clothing. 
If I know what's on it, I can just ignore it. If I usually wear Motley Crue t-shirts and flip-flops, I'd better read that list. Of course, not all emails are short and pithy. Sometimes you need details and data. Make it easy on your readers. Use bullets. Have plenty of white space between paragraphs. And use bold, italics, and other ways to visually make that information pop out at your readers. Make it easy on your reader. You should have no more than three responses to the same subject line. Don't include the whole string unless it's absolutely necessary. Don't expect them to read through all that clutter to find the important information. And be specific. Don't be shy about telling them what you want and how they should prioritize it. And of course, use your action words. What do you want them to do specifically and by when? Tell them what you want or you've given them an excuse not to do it. Action words are things like read, write, respond by. They'll know what you expect. So, to put it simply, make it easy for them to skim by putting the important information in the subject line and the preview pane. And make it clear and easy to decipher by using the inverted pyramid style. Clear headlines, a solid first paragraph including all the action items, and an easy to read body. The result will be that your emails will get read, you'll get better results, your readers will be less aggravated, and maybe, just maybe, you'll become an inspiration to your team. We hope you found these tips useful, and as we say on the Cranky Middle Manager Show, don't let the weasels get you down. To learn more great management techniques from the brightest minds in the business, listen to the Cranky Middle Manager Show podcast or visit us at www.crankymiddlemanager.com.